Okay, so we're gonna go back to slides to talk about the streptococcus. So we say the uh, streptococcus pyogenes, this is one of the most important pathogen. We call it Rebecca Lansfield group A, beta hemolytic streptococcus. And we mentioned about beta hemolytic is completely transparent zone, hydrolyzed lysis, hemolytic of the blood cell on the blood agar. Okay, so transparent zone. Now, this guy is very invasive. Why? Because they have extracellular enzymes break down host molecules. They have a streptokinesis can dissolve clots, and they have a streptolytic O and S can kill leukocytes, which means a white blood cell. And they have M capsule and M protein for attachments. So it's very invasive. Because of this M protein, we could be differentiate that into group A, group B, and group D. So we just mentioned. Now, what's the symptoms? Very typical symptom is strep throat. We just mentioned that. But of course, it's a phragenitis and tonsillitis. will be accompanied by that. Okay, now this is, we mentioned, it's very invasive. At the beginning, that could be spread by droplets of severe and the, sec and the nasal secretions. But also, at the beginning, it will be an impaired hygel. It's a redness, endema, and then become lymph nodes enlargement in the throat. That's later stage. We have a cellulosis, cellulosis between that. Now, even you recover, you still got something problem, which is groomer uh, nephritis and a rheumatic fever. Okay, so that's what we mentioned in the video. Now, group B streptococcus. It's also gram positive, streptococcus agalactia. Now, this is usually what we say is transferred to person to person, especially for the newborn baby. So that's why we say woman at 30, pregnant woman at 35, 37 week has to do a screening test. Otherwise, the newborn baby will have ammonia, meningitis, and sepsis. Sepsis was one example of the bactericemia. Now, how we differentiate that? We mentioned about the A-disc. The components is called the basic tracing. Now what happened, streptococcus pyogenes is have a clear zone, so it's sensitive, susceptible to the basic tracing, to the A-disc. And uh, you see all these dots right here? This is a streptococcus agalactia, group B streptococcus agalactia. They were resistant to the basic tracing. So surrounded the A-disc, you still see the bacteria growing there. Okay, so that's how we diagnose that. Now, then we mention about the staphylococcus. Staphylococcus is gram-positive cock cell. It is a grip shape. You sometimes, you will say it's a pairs of tetris, but we say it's a grip shape. Now, I want to say that it's a facultative anaerobis, which means it's grow better with oxygen but can grow with or without oxygen, grow better with oxygen. It is catalase test positive. And we will mention this later on. This is catalase test positive, which means you put H2O2 on the agar, it will show bubble because H2O2 will be hydrolyzed by catalase, become oxygen and water. That bubble is oxygen. And the staphylococcus cells could be in upper respiratory tract, skin, and an intestinal and a vagina. So we just mentioned about that. The staphylococcus aureus, coagulase test positive, pathogenic. Now coagulase test, which is a test for the blood cell clotting. If it's coagulase test positive, then the rabbit blood cell will be groomed together, like a glue. So that's called the coagulase test positive. Now staphylococcus epidemis is coagulase test negative. And the staphylococcus saprophyticus is also coagulase tested negative. Okay, so staphylococcus aureus, we mentioned about the three things, food intoxication, MRSA, and the TSST. Staphylococcus epidemis, we usually say it is a normal bacteria on the surface, but in the hospital sometimes will be cause problem, looking, they're looking for opportunity. So we call it a nosocomia opportunistics. Now, staphylococcus saprophytics, 
we mentioned in the video, it's most likely for the sexual activity woman at 17 to 25 years old. So we call it a honeymoon bacteria. And we can do a quick test because all among those three staphylococcus, only staphylococcus saprophyticus is resistant to low dose of novel biofilm. Now, tachoic acids, peptic glycan contribute to the pathogenicity. This is the slides which show you how invasive of staphylococcus it is because they have so many enzymes can be break down the tissue and the blood vessel. So I'm not gonna go over these one by one. You can see there are so many things, so many enzymes which is generated by staphylococcus. That's why it's very invasive. Now staphylococcus errors, you can be first happens on the skin surfaces sometimes. Okay, coagulase is formed by a fimbria well around the lean, then limited spread. So we see some of the lean that happens on the first, but then they will be spread in the lymphatic and the bloodstream because it's so invasive. Now, this is what I was talking about, the toxic shock syndrome, which is a Riley, the company have a tampon. That tampon back in 1970 is very popular because it's highly super absorbent. But what happened is women using the period of time, if they use it, all the liquid is gone, the moisture is gone. So the bacteria are gonna be, lots of the bacteria died, but Staphylococcus aureus can be survived in the very dry vagina tract and they started to dominate. And what happened is they're gonna show you toxic shock syndrome, including low blood pressure, fever, diarrhea, extensive skin rash and shading of the skin. Then the blood temperature is lower. What, what happens, there is not enough blood go to the organs like liver, like spleen. So they're gonna have a sh shock syndromes. And some of the people are dying. So that product has been out of the markets since 1970. Okay, that's a toxic shock syndrome. Now, this is another problem we talk about often. You heard about this, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. So they are resistant to the beta-lactin antibiotics, penicillin and the cephalorospin. Now, this is actually is an advanced level of penicillin because penicillin, ampicillin, cephalorospin has become bacterial resistant, so they created a mesocillin. But mesocillin is using too much, so become mesocillin resistant to staphylococcus aureus. This is, happens heavily, which is in the hospital, because of the carelessness. Sometimes they will be associated with fatal infection, and they could also acquire it in the healthcare settings. The only reason caused by this is carelessness. They did not do a very good of the clean hygiene in the operation room, and they started to dominate and become resistant and start to spread. Okay, now it's a big issue. Because of methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus, people have to be worried about these super bugs, especially these super bugs go to the environments, it's gonna cause a huge problem. That's why uh, antibiotic resistance has become a national risk since 2013. Okay, so this is the end of the first section of the bacteria disease. We're gonna follow and talk about the next couple of slides, next couple of lectures, we'll talk about the cross-chain most of the time.